was uh, noticing the same thing, Mr. Brockton. Do you think we'll have much fun when we get to Paris? I can't wait that long. I got my son spotted right now. Yeah. Right behind me is a straw hat. He ain't the type. Listen, dear, anybody that can take himself a man secretary to Europe is a type for me. And my name ain't Maxine Mature. What's your name? You know, mechanical perfection always uh, interests me. Huh? Oh, uh, quite right. A very neat uh, precision, don't you think so? They can do better. Who are they? Kelly's Affairs of 1934. Kelly's Affairs? All of them? <clears throat> this fellow Kelly must be quite a person. No, no, it's a girl show. You've heard of the Zigfeld Follies? Well, this is Kelly's Affairs of 1934. Nevertheless, I think this fellow Kelly must lead a wild, disgraceful life. Oh, <laughs> pardon me. My name is J. Ashmore uh, Brockton. And mine is James W. Kelly. Well, well how embarrassing. <laughs> I must have offended him. Oh, don't let it bother you. Have a cigar. Girls, I want to talk to you. Just run into the salon. Yes, Come on, do what the boss says. Scram into the saloon. Here, where you go? Oh, I beg your pardon. I, I thought you were one of my girls. Really? Well, uh, what I mean to say is, uh, or was. Uh... Thank you. I'll bet his father was a hotel detective. You ought to know. Wait a minute. Now listen, girls. This show is going to Paris. You all have contracts. I want you to remember it's a business trip. Yes, I've agreed to deliver an entire cast. So if any of you think you're going to grab off a rich husband and quit show business, you're all wrong. Yes, yes Mr. Kelly. So remember, just keep your minds on your feet and off your hearts. In other words, stay away from the mess. Yes, Mr. Kelly. And it's understood. No romance this trip. Okay, Happy. You tell him the rest. I got to go see the captain. Yes, Mr. Kelly. Miss Catherine Bell and Mays. And just who is Miss Catherine Bell? I don't know, sir, but she seems to be a person of considerable importance. Thank you. Is there anything else, sir? Yes. Uh, who has 209? It's vacant. You mean uh, it was vacant? Yes, sir. It was vacant. Let 
that I was stupid, laughing at the fair-haired boy. With his little dart, he awakened my heart to the joys I Like the ocean this morning. Oh, I think it's awfully cute. If you think that this proposition is worthy, hey, how did she get that so quickly? Oh, she just had one of her little spells of the dropsy. Dropsy? Yes. First she dropped her bag and he picked it up. Then she dropped her book and he picked that up. Then she dropped her handkerchief. And she picked him up. Yes, yes Mr. Kelly. I want you girls to understand that. Give me your handkerchief. Huh? Come on, your handkerchief. Oh, lady. You dropped your handkerchief, Miss. Uh, show you just what I mean. Uh, Rodney. Yes, Mr. Rodney. The Bulgarian contract. Yes, sir. Oh, you play contract? I'm just dying to learn. No, 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 my dear. You misunderstand. You see, my contract is with the king of Belgardia. He's engaged me as efficiency engineer. The Belgardian papers, sir. Yes, yes, thank you. <clears throat> you see, this is my contract with the king. And I might add that it's a very valuable document. Oh, it's pretty, isn't it? I don't see anything about money in here. Why, there it is. I'm to receive 100,000 pursuitors. That's the Bulgarian uh, unit of exchange. You've heard of the pursuitors? Oh, sure. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, dear. I'm afraid I'll never learn. On account of maybe I'm too young to understand about money. Oh, now, don't you be discouraged, my dear. Just you come and see me every day, and I'll explain it to you step by step. Oh, that's sweet of you, Mr. Thompson. But I'm afraid I can't on account of Mr. Kelly. Why, Mr. Kelly? Well, you see, he's pretty strict about our having genuine friends. And on account of he has me under contract to him, I have to do just what he tells me. Now, if you had my contract, I'd have to do just what you tell me, wouldn't I? I suppose so. Mm -hmm. Pardon me. Yes, sir. See Mr. Kelly and attend to this matter. Oh, it's my Shall I buy the young lady's contract, sir? Why, of course. Mm 
Mr. Kelly? I'm Kelly. I have come to see you on a very important matter. Will you join us? Thank you. Bartender, another glass. Pick yourself up, bud. Thank you, sir. I'll take a cigar. I'll smoke it when I get off duty. Mr. Kelly, you'd give a charming lady great happiness if you'd sell her contract. What are you talking about? Miss Maxine Latour. Well, who the deuce are you? I'm Mr. J. Ashmore Brockton's secretary. Yeah? Then talk to my secretary. Both want to buy the whole show? Oh, no. No, it's just Miss Latour. Uh, can't do that. Bust up her whole troop. She's a featured dancer. Mr. Brockton will be very disappointed. His wrath will know no bounds. Oh, don't let that bother you. Have a cigar. <coughs> well, let me hear it, Miss. the house at home? Uh, I'm working my way through college, and I thought that possibly she might be interested in uh, a ladies' home companion. No, Mr. Kelly. Good morning, Maxine. Oh, don't you just love those things? Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, they remind me of my youth. Did you skate much? No, never. But they still remind me of my youth. Oh, that's too bad. Because I'm just crazy about men of skates. Oh, they're so athletic. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> may I borrow your skates? Oh, but that's more you might get hurt. Oh, tut tut tut. <laughs> Skating is merely a matter of concentration and coordination. Merely. Merely child's play. <laughs> Easy as falling off a log. Oh, Ashmore! Oh, Ashmore, oh, you hurt? Oh. A slight miscalculation. Well, let me help you. Oh! Maxine! Maxine! Oh, why did you do that? Fancy meeting you here. I just thought I'd drop in. Won't you have dinner with me? I'd love to have dinner with you tonight. Swell. Sylvie, I'm on fire. It's the liniment, Your Highness. No, silly. It's the American. He's the nicest man I've ever met. And simply... No, I, I just can't think of the word. Is it nuts, Your Highness? Thank you, Sylvia. That's the word. I'm simply nuts about him. <laughs> Hello? I'm as happy as a lark Flying through the clouds above Gee, it's grand Here I stand Right next door to love Once I whistled in the dark Now I'm cooing like a dove Goose hangs high Here am I Right next door to love. Please unlock the door to happiness. If I knock with your heart and salute, please say yes. You would fit within my arm like a hand within a glove. Come on in. 
come right next door to love. You know, I'm an awful dud. Why? Oh, I don't know. I've made love to dozens of women and dozens of slaves. Now that I'm really in love, I... Well, I don't know what to say. Well, what would you say if you were in the theater? Well, that'd be simple. Here. Now, this is the stage. And this is the proscenium arch. Now, over here are the wings. Now, over here is a bench. And you are seated on the bench. Then I come on over here. And you look up and sigh. And then you say, you shouldn't have come, Montmorency. Think, my father. And I look back at you, and then the orchestra strikes the chord. Is there anything wrong? I'm afraid the show's over. A fine bunch of friends. Listen to this. No. I should say not. Nothing doing. <laughs> Santa Claus is dead. They had any other way of saying no that have used it. <laughs> we'll get out of it somehow. We've been broke before. Yeah, I know it. We didn't have a gang of women on our hands, though. So do you realize we haven't got enough dough to bring them back home? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. oh I'm sorry, sir, but it's not for you. <laughs> <laughs> a radiogram for Mr. Brockton. Why did I ever become an efficiency engineer? It was very inefficient of you. What's that? I mean, it was a trifle inefficient for a man of your great intelligence. Intelligence? Bah! 
My goodness, when I see a lot of brainless idiots making a success. Look at those two fools over there, enjoying a perfectly lovely trip with, without a thing to worry about. You know what burns me up happy is to see a couple of saps like that sitting on top of the world. We'd have been better off if you'd have sold him Maxine's contract when he wanted it. Yeah. Rodney. Yes, sir? Do you think I can manage a theatrical troupe of uh, young ladies? You always were an expert at figures, sir. Happy? Our troubles are over. How come? I'll give him Maxine's contract if he takes the rest of the gals with us. Kelly, you're a genius. Did you ever see a horse trade, Rodney? No, sir. Well, um, the trick is to trade the horse that you don't want for the one that you do want. Understand? Perfectly. But uh, we have no horse. <laughs> Give me that Belgardian contract. That's our horse. <clears throat> but you can't trade this contract. It's worthless, sir. <laughs> they don't know that. <laughs> Steward. <clears throat> Yes, sir? Will you ask those two gentlemen over there if they will join us in a drink, please? Ask the gentlemen over there if they'll join us in a drink. Yes, sir. <coughs> <laughs> Mr. Kelly would like you to join him in a drink. Mr. Brockton would like you to join him in a drink. Certainly. <laughs> yes. You offered to buy Miss Latour's contract. Now, uh, I've been thinking it over. Uh, don't mind, Mr. Kelly. Mm -hmm. Now, if I wanted to buy your whole show, um, you might have felt differently. Well, uh, uh, I've never thought of selling. But if I did, it would have to be an awfully good proposition. And of course, I haven't thought of <laughs> buying, but if I did, I, I might lay $500 down, uh, just like that. Then what would you say? Why, I brought those kids up from Cora's Girls. Even if I wanted to sell my show, which I don't, it would take a lot more than 500. Well, of course, if I really wanted to buy your show, I might raise that 500 to 1,000. That's perfectly ridiculous. Say, if I sold my show, I wouldn't know what to do with myself. Well, I can fix that. <laughs> I have a contract here with the King of Dolgardia that will pay the owner 100,000 pesudas a year as an efficiency expert. Just how much is that in real money? $10,000. No. If I really loved a girl in your show that I couldn't bear to be separated from, I might throw the contract in with the deal. Then what would you say? I'd never let it be said that a Kelly stood in the way of true love. It's a deal. Rodney. Yes, sir. Transfer the contract? Yes. Moran, transfer our contract. There we are, gentlemen. I wish you the best of luck. <laughs> Thanks. Have a cigar. Snake, uh, snake's not here. Oh, boy. Yes, sir. Cigar mm. for the gentleman. Yes, sir. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Here, tell it to your new boss, Mr. J. Ashmore Proctor. Oh, Ashmore, is it true? <laughs> Indeed it is, my dear. <laughs> um, I certainly put one over on Kelly. Your Highness, if you didn't see him again. But, Sylvia, I love him. 
You know, they're both back tomorrow. And then I know. Oh, the whole thing's impossible. But I must see him tonight. Even if it's only to say goodbye. I'm so glad we got that thousand bucks. Now we can beat it back home. Not so fast. We're going to Belgardia to collect on this contract. Oh, what do you know about running a kingdom? Listen, stupid. Didn't I play the lead in the student prince, the vagabond king, and all the king's horses? All these kingdoms are alike. It's a cinch. I hope you don't forget your line. Beat it, will you? I'll see you later. Good evening. Good evening. Good night, Sylvia. Good night. I've been looking all over for you. Isn't this our time? I thought you'd forgotten. I wish this boat didn't dock tomorrow. So do I. But I'll see you again. I'm afraid not. What's the matter? Going to meet your husband? I'm not married. In love with someone else? No. Well, now that that's all settled, when will I see you again? You won't. After tonight, we mustn't meet again. Oh, I see. Just another shipboard romance, eh? No, no, you're wrong. You can use the sweetest thing that's ever happened to you. But we can't see each other anymore. Why not? Don't ask me. I can't tell you. Oh, I can't leave you like this. I love you. Don't you remember last night? Do you hear what they're playing?
I'm the king. worrying about that girl, will you? I can't, Happy. I simply got to find her. We've looked everywhere for her. She just disappeared into thin air. Oh, forget it, will you? How can I? I tell you, Happy, this is different. You don't understand. I love her. Hey, stop the car. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate this very much. I shall see that you are suitably rewarded. Quite all right, forget it. But I mean it. I shall make you a count and you a duke. You take it easy, old man. Everything's going to be all right. You see, you've been out in the sun just a little bit too long. But you don't understand. Gentlemen, I am the king. Why? Certainly, certainly. Uh, shake hands with the student prince. And I am the court jester. But, <laughs> gentlemen, I assure you. Now, hold everything. Hold everything. Uh, did you ever see this one? <laughs> but no, really? never mind. Never mind. Now, wait a minute. I can do something better than that. Do you like flowers? Yes. Well, smell that. Jim's dead. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're not a bad guy at that. Now, what's your name, though? Maxie Indian. <laughs> no harm met, Maxie, old boy. Maxie, this is as far as we go. Yeah, beat it. We got business inside. But I want to go in here, too. That's what we get for picking up a hobo. Oh, we'll let him go. The guards will throw him out anyhow. Listen, Maxie, we gave you a lift. Now, what more do you want? But this is where well, I... Well, if you must follow us, you might as well help. Here, take these. Here you are, my man, for your trouble. Have a cigar. Take it on the lamb. On the lamb? Yeah, scram. Oh, scram. <laughs> That's it. How'd you like the way those woods are saluting us? Some reception, eh? They must have been expecting us. We're a couple of big shots. You said it, pal. Oh. Run along, my man. Tell the king the efficiency engineers are here. Oh, where's your pass? Why, we don't need any pass. The king sent for us. No pass. How did you get in the palace? Have a cigar. He just walked in. Fourth century, huh? You're under arrest. Your Excellencies, these men have forced their way into the palace. Well, what have you to say for yourself? It's a frame up. I want a lawyer. That's a poor excuse. We ought to give them 10 years in prison. Say, you're making a terrible mistake. I've changed my mind. We'll give them 20 years. It's an outrage. I demand to see the king. He's expecting us. Why, the men are maniacs. We'll give them life. Hey, wait till the king hears about this. You'll all be looking for new jobs. His majesty, the king. Man, now you'll get it. Wait till I tell him what's been going on around here. Holy 
Smoke it, Maxie. Oh, tell the boys I died, Dame. Your Majesty, these men forced their way into the palace. It isn't true. How did you get past the sentries? Why, we came in with... I don't uh, remember, Your Honor. You see, Your Majesty, we are the efficiency experts from America. Uh, my name is Kelly, and this is my assistant, Mr. Moran. I have sent for these gentlemen. Welcome to Belgardia. Uh, Now we are even. All right, take it on the land. On the land, Your Majesty? Yes, scram. Gentlemen, be seated. Me? Mr. Kelly, I want this country completely reorganized, and it's up to you. You will have complete charge of everything even the finances of this kingdom. That's just what I want. I'll put this over like a three-ring circuit. And don't think he can do it. He's one of the smartest men in the show. Uh, I mean, in the sufficiency racket. Your Majesty, documents of importance. In the future, give all documents of this sort to Mr. Kelly. Here you are. Gas. Telephone. Electricity. What? No milk or ice? Oh, my mistake. Say, why weren't these bills paid? They want money. And we haven't any. You mean you're broke? Absolutely. We've been gypped. Double-crossed. Say, haven't you any assets at all? Uh, here is the list of everything. These are the liabilities. And these, the assets. Say, what's this 500,000 mops? That's our main industry. It's the only thing we manufacture in this country. Well, why don't you sell them? We can't. People prefer using vacuum cleaners. Say, just how do you get along? We don't. Prince Alexis of Morodia had to lend us 200,000 pazutas. You will find that in the liabilities. How are you going to repay him? That's for you to worry about. Have you a match? Oh, sure. Thanks for the cigar. I haven't smoked an American cigar in a long time. Oh, I'm sorry, but, but that's the last match I had. Here's an item of three princes named Stefani. Good-looking boys? Rather look like me. Fine. We'll ship them to Hollywood and marry them to screen stores. That always works. It's entirely in your head. That's the spirit. Happy, have you got a match? Sure. Why didn't you light the king's cigar? <laughs> Those practical jokes of yours are going to get us in trouble someday. These trick matches don't light. My mistake. I didn't want to smoke, anyhow. Say, hey, who is this Princess Tania? She certainly knows how to spend money. She's my daughter. The successor to the throne. My only child. You know how it is. Oh, I see. Where is she now? She's in Paris. But she'll be here in a few days. Say, we can't afford a princess. She'll have to get married. Anyone interested in her? Uh, as a matter of fact, Prince Alexis lent us the 200,000 pazutas because he wants to marry her. Hmm. And if she marries him, we don't have to pay the debt. We kill off two birds with one stone. Same old story. Little Nell marries to pay off the mortgage on the old homestead. <laughs> but my daughter doesn't like Prince Alexis. Well, make her like him. You're her old man. Sure. Who's king around here anyway? I am. Then that settles it. She marries Prince Alexis. My prime minister has favored that idea for a long time. Wait until you meet him. I know you'll get on very well with Count Parcisi. You may go, gentlemen. Count Parcisi! Count Parcisi! A good day's work, gentlemen. I wonder what happened to my cigar. 
Thanks, gentlemen. For years, someone has been stealing my cigars, and I never could find out who it was. Oh, just a sample of our efficiency, Your Majesty. Call me Maxie. Okay, Maxie. So long, Maxie. Help for Casey. Welcome back, Cheesy. How is my daughter? I brought her safely back from America. She's on the train now. I came uh, back uh, by airplane. Good. This dilly-dallying has been going on long enough. I have made up my mind that my daughter shall marry Prince Alexis of Moronia. Uh, but, Your Majesty, uh, suppose she doesn't like the idea. I'll make her like it. I'm her old man. Who's king around here, anyhow? Uh, you are Your Majesty. Then that settles it. Leave immediately for Moronia and tell Prince Alexis that we are announcing his betrothal to the Princess Tanya. I shall leave at once, Your Majesty. to accept the prince's engagement gift. Why is that so for rebellion? What will we do? Don't let her get away with it just because you're her father. Show her that you're the king. You're right. It's only your father. Get away from here. I don't ever want to see you again. Leave this to me. I've handled temperamental prima donnas before. Oh, Princess, will you please open this door so we can discuss this quietly? Now you listen to me, young lady. This nonsense has got to stop. That suits me, so the sooner you stop, the better I'll like it. Oh, wise cracker, eh? Are you a funny little idiot? With a disposition like yours, you should be very happy that any man wants to marry you. Oh, is that so? Well, did you ever see Prince Alexis? And what has that got to do with it? He has gold teeth and a bald head. And furthermore, he's 81 years old. So much the better. He can't live forever. The engagement has been announced. Unless you go through with this marriage, it means war. Good. It'll give the army some exercise. But we can't go to war. The army quit last payday. Don't you realize if you don't marry Prince Alexis, he'll foreclose the mortgage on this palace? I can't help it. I will not marry that man. And why not? Because I love someone else. Oh. Going to sacrifice your country for a drugstore cowboy, eh? He's the finest man that ever lived. If he were half a man instead of a marked-down gigolo, he'd be here with you right now. If he were, he'd make you eat your words, you union men compost. Princess or no princess, there's no pug-nosed, bandy-legged, cock-eyed bell guardian going to call me a nincompoop and get away with it. Hey, is there any other way into that room? Uh, through the balcony. You shouldn't have followed me here. I don't know what they'll do to you if they find you with me. They want me to marry some old prince. But I love you. Oh, please take me away from here. Oh, gee, that's a swell idea. Where did you get this engagement present? 
But darling, I, I didn't know that you were the princess. Oh, so this engagement is your idea. Oh, but how was I to know that you... Hey, what difference does that make? And you were the man who had nerve enough to tell me not to sacrifice my country for a drugstore cowboy, a cheap fortune hunter. Well, you're right, I won't. Oh, but darling... Don't darling me. I'm just a pug-nosed, cross-eyed, bald-legged Belgardian that's only fit to marry Prince Alexis. You fixed it for me to marry him. All right, I will. But listen, darling, can't we... See if you can fix that. Father. But Tanya, I... Your flunky here has just convinced me that I should marry Prince Alexis. Your Majesty. Not a word, not a word, my boy. <laughs> this is no time for modesty. You might pass it off lightly, but I know you've done a great job. Congratulations. But listen, Happy, this is serious. We're in an awful jam. What do you mean, we are? You are. You were the one who thought about running this kingdom. Oh, I know it. But I got her into the mess, now I got to get her out of it. Well, how different does that make? As far as she's concerned, you're in the doghouse. I'm not worrying about myself, but I can't stand by and watch her marry this mug. Tell me, what am I going to do? Why ask me? I didn't play in all the king's horses. Gee, if I could only pay that Alexis the 200,000 pursuiters that Maxie owes him, I could tell him to go jump in the lake. <laughs> that's it. Happy, all we have to do is raise 200,000 pursuiters. Yeah, that's all we have to do, raise 200,000 pursuiters. Oh, but Happy, listen. Oh, where are you going? We would like to see the palace. Oh, that's against the law. We came all the way from Iowa, and Effie here, that's my wife, she's never seen a palace. We'll give you 25 pursuiters. Why, I couldn't think of it. Well, I'm a son of a gun. Uh, uh, for less than 50 pursuiters. Okay, we'll give you 50 pursuiters. Well, how dare you offer me 50 pursuiters to let you enter the palace grounds? Why, I wouldn't violate His Majesty's commands for a million pursuiters. Very good, Otto. Very good. You may take the rest to the afternoon off. Oh, thank you, sir. Did you offer my guard 50 pursuiters to let you in the palace grounds? I'm sorry, sir, but I did. You couldn't make it 100 pursuiters, could you? Yes, sir. <laughs> Happy? Our troubles are over. How come? Get a load of that. Good night, Kelly. I was just on my way to work. Kelly, you're a 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 You're
Gracious Majesty, with a slight sum of 25 for Ah, beautiful lady, would you like to have your photograph made beside the King of Bulgaria? Okay, boy. Give us a little birdie. Thank you, Your Majesty. Won't you buy a mop? A mop? I should say not. I use a vacuum cleaner. is the mop of romance. It is the mop beautiful. From the shimmering rainbow comes the exquisite colors. From the fragrant wildflowers, their exotic perfume. It is the personality mop. Born in a palace and fit for a king. So good night, everybody. Until the same hour tomorrow, when Personality Mop will again bring you Jimmy Kelly, the voice of romance, singing. There's a love song in the air. It's the song of my heart calling to you. Can't you hear my song? Even though we're apart, my love is true. Every word, every note tells my longing. Every rhyme speaks of you through and through. There's a love song. your personality, madam? Black Narcissus. Oh, dear. What color? 
going? It's almost time for the broadcast. The voice of romance. I didn't know it was so late. Girls, you missed the broadcast. Oh, I Eight o'clock, the hour of romance, brought to you by the personality mop, worn in the palace and fit for a king. If you haven't already got your personality mop, you better hurry, there are only a few left. We now bring to you Jimmy Kelly, the voice of romance, singing. anything by it. I'll give you your money back. Hmm. Oh, give me the two and I'll forget all about it. Well, uh, I haven't got it right now. But if you wait... Oh, I'll quit, Miss Darling. I hold a market on this palace and if you can't pay, I'll take it over. Boris, we are moving in. Now, if you'll only wait for a while, you'll get your money plus 10% interest. Who are you? Well, I'm the king's efficiency engineer. Sure, he's the man who put the kingdom on its feet. It was he who sold all the mops. He is an imposter. He is nothing but a cheap singer. Ooh, heck, oh, cool. This fellow Kelly met the princess on the boat and followed her out here. That's why she doesn't want to marry you. Oh, so that's it. Well, nobody can take my girl and make a fool out of me. Boris, take this coon out and shoot him. Did you hear that? Well, I certainly did. They're going to kill our cooners. They're killing our cooners! They're killing our cooners! They're killing our cooners! Oh, Jimmy. Oh, my darling. Please. Call for time. Do something. Call? What'll I do? Anything at all. Okay. 
There's a love song in the air. It's the song of my heart calling for you. Can't you hear my 